Do you have a sprained ankle? Are you researching ways to heal quickly, but also to heal strong? If so, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher and a trainer. I sprained my left ankle three times in recent years. I've learned a lot through my healing journey. Hopefully I'll be able to share that with you. The first time I sprained my ankle, I came off a bike. There was nothing I could do about it. It was a really severe grade three sprain. The other times that I did it were directly related to that first time. I didn't heal up strong. I had quite a bit of joint laxity. The following time, I quite literally tripped over my own foot. And the third time, I fell into a little hole on the beach. Unfortunately, each time I was off my feet, unable to do the activities, the yoga practices that I love for six weeks, eight weeks, one time even 12 weeks. It was really, really challenging. I'm trying to avoid doing that again. Most of the advice on the internet is to ice, compress, elevate use pain relievers. All of this is terrible. Hopefully in this video will help to clear up the myth versus reality about healing an ankle sprain and give you some actionable ideas to move forward. We'll discuss the anatomy of an ankle sprain and how the healing process really works. Number two, how to avoid those really bad advice that you'll find online that we mentioned before. And number three, we'll look at a five minute daily self-care routine you can start doing from week two onward. As usual, I'll put a PDF link down below if you'd like to skip forward to the exercises. If you like this channel and the videos I produce, the simplest way to support me is just hit subscribe down below. I publish once a week. Quick disclaimer here, I am not a medical doctor. If you have a grade three sprain, you would have visible black and blue marks, probably wouldn't be able to put weight just on the one foot. Please go see a doctor and get an x-ray. You want to rule out micro fractures or other more serious conditions. If your feet injury is serious, this can become a really, really debilitating problem. Let's take a look at the anatomy of your ankle. It's really an amazing joint in your body. Some people refer to this as a mortis and tenon joint. This is a term borrowed from the carpentry world. And the way that your ankle joint works is it hinges like your knee, but it also, it also does something called inversion. This is where we roll. And then it does eversion, and this is like the arch dropping down. So we have dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion. About 90% of the time when you roll your ankle stepping down from a curb, when you're wearing heeled shoes and you fall to one side, or a sports injury where you over invert, about 90% of the time, an ankle sprain involves the ligaments, one, two, or three ligaments on the lateral side of your ankle here. So you utilize that inversion movement, but you went a bit too far. The thing that stabilizes your ankle, like all joints, are the ligaments, the bone-to-bone -bone connective tissues. Let me show you on this model, it's a little more clear. On the lateral side of your ankle, on the outside of your ankle, we have three main stabilizing ligaments. And the first one here is almost always implicated in an ankle sprain, and it's called your anterior, uh, your anterior talofibular ligament. Talo referring to talus, fibular referring to fibula, the outer leg bone here. This one is almost always involved in an ankle sprain, and maybe this one down below as well, which is called your calcaneofibular ligament, going from your calcaneus, your heel, up to your fibula. Sometimes this posterior ligament, it's not shown here in the model, is involved as well, but usually it's one, two, or even one, two, and three ligaments on the outer edge of your ankle. Ligaments have very poor blood supply. They're low in terms of their metabolic rate. So unlike muscle tissue that you can beat up, get sore, and heal in a few days, ligament healing times are weeks or very often months, and in some cases even years. Let's talk about what happens during an ankle sprain. Usual thing is somebody's out playing a game of pickup basketball, maybe hiking on a trail, out for a late Saturday night and rolls on a pair of high-heeled shoes. And the first thing you think is, oh, it's getting inflamed and it hurts. I better put an ice pack on it and take an ibuprofen. Swelling goes down, pain goes away, and right away most people go, whew, I'm healing, I'm getting better. No, you're not. You're not healing, you're not getting better, nothing has happened. You've simply relieved pain and you've gotten in the way of your body's own healing mechanism. What is your body's healing mechanism? Three phases. The first phase is inflammation. Inflammation is natural, it's normal, and it's pro-healing. When inflammation happens, especially during those first five days, a whole bunch of new fibroblast cells come in to heal up and clean up that area, to clean up the dead tissue, and to start to lay down in the proliferation phase a new extracellular matrix. 
think about this as in week one and week two, your body coming in with like a Spider-Man web and covering that area with some really pretty generalized, disorganized scar tissue. It's not very strong, it's not very resilient, but simply like a, similar to an initial scab on a cut on your arm, that initial proliferation is important for healing, but the next phase is just as important, and that is the remodeling phase. And this is the phase that people don't think about. So we have inflammation, proliferation, those fibroblasts, and then we have remodeling. And remodeling is when those disorganized tissues get organized and the fibers get aligned so that you heal strong and your scar tissue becomes strong and resilient. There's a couple of important processes that happen, and one is called mechanotransduction. And this is where by carefully stressing and utilizing these tissues, it stimulates those fibroblasts, it stimulates those new tissues. And the other thing that it does by utilizing this is we get collagen remodeling. Think of that initial spider web of new tissues as type three collagen. It does the job of patching it up, but it's not very strong, like maybe 20% the strength of your original tissue. In order to turn that type three collagen into type one collagen, we need corrective exercises. We need careful movement. You've heard the term movement is medicine. This is really true when it comes to ligament healing, but you always have to err on the side of caution and you want to start utilizing and loading up these tissues little by little. During your first week of any ankle sprain can be really helpful to buy one of these cheap boots. You can get medical versions. This is just a cheap version off Amazon. It costs about $25 or $30. And what this does is it keeps your ankle from inverting or everting. You can still do a little bit of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, but that side-to-side -side movement is limited. And during that initial inflammation phase, to not re-injure or exacerbate it, this can be really, really helpful. Now, it's not the most elegant thing, but you can hobble around in this and it can make a big difference. Eventually, especially during your proliferation and your remodeling phase, you can graduate to something like this. Now, this has been used and abused for many months, all three times I wore this. And you'll see even professional athletes wearing braces like this inside your shoe, which is what I recommend. If you think about a hiking boot, if you think about a high top basketball shoe, what are those for? What they're providing is a little bit of ankle support. This provides a lot of ankle support. This stiff plastic brace on the side of your ankle can give you quite a bit more stability and again, limit that inversion and that eversion movement for weeks and yes, maybe even months. This is the part that people forget is this remodeling phase can take up to a year. Meaning just because your inflammation has gone down, just because your pain has gone away, doesn't mean that those ligaments are as strong as you need them to be. It can take many, many months to get there. And during that time, you wanna err on the side of caution. So unlike me, you don't keep re-spraining, re-spraining that same ankle, because it can create a lot of problems going forward. So the traditional advice is the acronym RICE, rest, ice, compress, elevate. This will do nothing for healing. This will reduce pain, reduce inflammation. If anything, it will slow things down. If anything, it will cut off pain so you can accidentally hurt yourself more. If you're able to manage the pain, do it. If you need ibuprofen to sleep at night or to get through your work day, okay, fine. But do not, do not turn off your body's healing mechanisms and do not mask pain unless it's absolutely necessary. And don't kid yourself. That's not part of the healing process. So once we've gone through these initial phases, once we've gotten through especially that first five days and we've really reduced mobilization and we're now ready to start very gently stressing that area so that our disorganized tissues can start to organize those fibers, the next phase is to do some really, really careful exercises. I'd like to share with you a five minute routine that you can start doing from week two onwards. Remember during the first five days post-injury, you want to keep things very simple. Keep that ankle mostly immobilized, wearing a boot or at least a brace if you can. After those five days, you can start to work on this simple routine to very gently start to stress and strengthen your ankle in full range of motion. Let me show you how it works. I've got a chair in front of me just for support. You could use a wall or a table. You might not even need it, but just in case so you don't lose stability with that injured ankle. I should mention we'll do both sides just to keep you balanced, even though, of course, you probably only rolled one of your ankles, or at least let's hope. 
got my hands here for support. I'll step my right foot forward, my left leg back behind me. This one can bend, but keep your right leg straight, your front leg straight, and we'll start off with plantar flexion. This is where you point your toe and lift your heel. Your gastrocnemius up here in your calf will tense up to make that happen. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's go the other way. So we'll do dorsiflexion. One, two, three, four, five. Legs stay straight. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next, we'll do the range of motion where your ankle rolls to the outside or the sole of your foot turns up. This is that same range of motion where you probably sprained your ankle, so be very careful. Maximum three or four out of 10 in terms of discomfort. Do not push into pain, three or four out of 10 discomfort or less. We'll very gently with a straight leg, invert your ankle. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we'll go the other way. It's called eversion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You might feel a little calf cramping. That's normal. Your foot might cramp a little. Pedal your legs out. We'll switch sides. Right leg is back. This leg can bend a little. Your front leg mostly straight. Let's start off with that plantar flexion. We go one, two, heel lifts three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now the other way, dorsiflexion. So we work on that anterior tibialis muscle on the front side of your shin. And we go one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, same thing as before, we do inversion. So, as if you were rolling your ankle, don't push into pain. Three, four out of ten, discomfort maximum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now, eversion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we'll do some isometric holds. I'll show you how to do it. Since we're here, my left knee bends just past my big toe, so dorsiflexion. My back foot points and rests on the top, so full plantar flexion. Find your balance and hold here. You can use the wall or you can steeple your hands with your fingers together. Gaze in front of you and really press down into the heel of your front foot. Press down into the tops of your toes on the back foot. We're working on dorsiflexion in the front, plantar flexion on the back. Again, gently stressing our ankle in full range of motion, but staying in control the whole time. Switch sides, so we're doing 30 seconds. And 30 seconds, find your balance, and hold here. Pressing into the heel on your front foot, pressing into the tops of your toes on your back foot, cramping in your calves, cramping in the front of your leg, and also cramping in your feet are normal. If you need to stop and punch out the cramp, feel free to do that and come back to the pose. Good. Slowly all the way back up and pedal your leg. Very short, simple routine. Again, from day six onward in your healing journey, you can focus on doing this every day for at least the first month. I hope you found this video helpful. I wish you a speedy and safe recovery of your ankle. Remember to take it slow, take your time, and think in terms of months, not in terms of weeks. As I mentioned before, the PDF to the exercises we mentioned is down below in the description. To get more science-based yoga and health span videos, click subscribe down below. If you have an experience, good or bad, with healing your ankle sprain or wearing a boot or a brace or anything, love to hear from you down in the comments below. You can always find my teaching calendar at yogabody.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.